It's okay, it's too fast. Ah! Go Freak Media. Welcome back to Go Freak Media. I am John John the Phenomenon. And I am Y2 Chris. I don't know what episode we are on. We are on. We missed a couple of uh, couple of weeks there due to things happening. Events going on and whatnot. Um, yep. <sighs> wow, that was a lot. Anyways, review. Let's get to it. I got a couple of pops here I want to show you guys. First one is Omega. So, Omega is part of the Bad Batch. She's the girl version of the clones. That was, I get, I, I, she's part of the Bad Batch, but I don't know. She's different. She's the girl of the clones, right? Just kind of like a recall or <laughs> something that they try to test out. Yeah, but she's a young, part of the younger generation. More of the Daniel Logan size would you say during the clone wars correct yeah right yeah um with her character there's something more than meets the eye with her mm. so maybe they did um purposely make a female version of daniel logan for a purpose we'll see i mean i'm enjoying the bad batch um episodes. i'm loving it yeah i'm loving it yeah it's totally cool uh one thing the that's really trippy is um What's going on with Wrecker right now? Oh, yeah, no. No, no spoilers, but yeah. Something's going on there. Mm. On to other things. This just came out from Hot Topic. The Biggie Smalls. The Notorious, Notorious B.I.G. B.I.G. But if you look right there, there's only 5,000 pieces made. 5,000 pieces made. I know you can't really see it because it's in the plastic... But there's only 5,000 pieces made. Crazy, right? Nice. Um, one thing about this, though. Uh, C.K. Malari was saying that um, he doesn't trust freaking Hot Topic with Funko. Because Lemmy came out from Motorhead, the silver one. And there was 5,000 pieces of that with the sticker on it. And later on, they released it again. So for 5,000 pieces, hmm. Who knows? Well, with the second round, did it say 5,000 still? Yes. And they released it again. So, who knows, right? It's probably one of those things, too, with all the sodas. They say there's about 3,000 of these soda cans and some of the some of the limited releases that are out there. But is it really? Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Don't matter. You're still going to buy them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Oh. Anyways, this isn't sponsored by Still Reserve. This is pretty tasty, though. The Blue Raz Spiked Still Reserve. Oh, my gosh. It's for Still Reserve because Still Reserve tastes like crap. Mm -hmm. This tastes pretty good, bro. Just saying. Cheers. 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 <sighs> Moving on. We're doing comics? We're doing comics. Okay. So the first comic I'm going to talk about is uh, Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Shadows, um, number three. It's part of the revamped What If series in Marvel. And basically, um, it's the story of Peter, uh, Peter Parker not giving up the symbiote. So in the past couple of issues, he already killed um, really well-known villains already, like badly. So, in this issue right here, um, uh, J. Jonah Jameson teams up with other villains to try to stop Spider-Man um, from killing more. And also, at the same time, the, uh, uh, the Avengers and the Fantastic Four teamed up trying to figure out how to stop Spider-Man and get the symbiote suit away from, from Peter Parker. Um, there's a scene in here, not too much of a spoiler, but... Uh, Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, is has like samples of the symbiote suit and trying to figure out how to do it. <clears throat> um, and there's a 
pretty big shocking ending to the ending of issue number three which i'm not gonna spoil it but also at the same time too we kind of also see with this what if story um what happened to eddie brock since he's not venom he became somebody else so that is a what if i just said a revamp of the what if series so i was about to say something about that what if though because there was a what if where spider-man did not get the symbiote uh, taken off of him forcefully. It had to be removed from from him. It was pretty crazy because not only did he get possessed by it, Thor got possessed by it, the Hulk got possessed by it, the Silver Surfer almost got possessed by it. But it, it, it was crazy. Let me just say that. Mm-hmm. If, if you go back to the second series of What If... Uh, what if Spider-Man never lost the symbiote? Um, read that one. That one's dope. I liked it. Check it out. Yep. <laughs> because, like what I said in the beginning, it's a revamp. Kind of like reboots and stuff. So, Did I just give away the story? No. Okay, good. <laughs> what do you got? I got... Something that came out from AWA Upshot. Uh, that's the comic book uh, publisher, you would say, but it's Moss. And the character that's in it is Emily Kai. Um, the art in this. She looks like someone I dated in high school. <laughs> that's probably why I got it. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, the art in this comic is freaking crazy. It's like real life mixed with CGI mixed with comic book. So I, I like the cover from it, obviously. I'm sure you do. Yep. <laughs> it's a number one of six, so it's a short series. I was like, you know what? I'm going to check this out. Um, it In the beginning, she explains that she's a moth. It's like okay, something's going on here. You don't know what it is and then come to find out they have a certain lifespan. That's all I'm going to do as a, spo- as a spoiler alert. But she does have certain abilities, I will say. But yeah, check it out. Moss. Number one is out now. Written by... I can't even see his name. No, say I, I, I want to hear, no, hear you say it. We Michael... Practiced. Michael... <laughs> J. J. Sh- Straczynski? Mike, no, it's J. Michael. J. Michael Straczynski? No, good job. Oh, okay. Good job. And art by Mike Choi. So, I I, I freaking like it uh, so far. Just to give you the behind the scenes, it took John John like 10 minutes to try to say the name correctly. Well, that, I don't know. It, it's, uh, you know, dyslexia does something weird to you. Um, what you got? Um, My next pick that I have is Geiger number three. Um, it's one of the popular titles going on with Image. Um, we discussed about it um, many episodes ago with Geiger number one and I gave the premises on here. Uh, this shows a little bit more of when Geiger um, cross, cross paths with um, one of the um, the like mafia king type people that have taken over the different sections of the uh, Las Vegas territory so and you know when I tell this story like I know he's gonna laugh because you know we live in this area but they went to go visit Geiger in Boulder City because that's where <laughs> Geiger is in, Bo- in Boulder City to confront Geiger in Boulder City so it shows a little bit of an origins of um, Geiger and, you know, him protecting his family that are in that um, nuclear silo. It shows a little bit more about the outcome of it. But if you read issue number two, um, there was a couple of people that escaped the strip to get away from uh, the tyranny that's going on over there. And... Um, Geiger has a big decision if he wants to help these people out on their mission that um, some information that they got that may um, give them a pass wage to safety away from 
Las Vegas. So issue number four next month, they're going to start their mission from Boulder City, Nevada. Uh, and they're headed towards? We'll find out. <laughs> See, they're going to be Arizona, Utah. Colorado? Colorado. Maybe it'll be in maybe it'll be in Penguin Lake, Utah. You never know. Ooh, good trout there. <laughs> um, that's Geiger number three, right? Geiger number three. Geiger number three. Okay. In Boulder City. Not Las Vegas. Not Las Not Vegas. No. The story is in Boulder City. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one seventeen. Um, if you look, it looks like, uh, all the turtles are behind bars, kind of, right? But, I don't know. I, I guess this is a homage to Pride, Pride Month, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. All, all, all the, um, publishing companies this month are, um, paying homage to Pride Month. Um, I know Marvel and DC have, like, a one-shot Pride Month with, like, all their characters, um, that they're supporting, uh, for their, um, just like last month, they had the Asian Heritage Month, and, um, DC Comics came out with an Asian heritage with like all the um, Asian characters um, on there too. So same thing too with that cover that you're seeing. Awesome. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 117. Uh, last time on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 116. Previously. Previously. Um, they were doing a battle of the bands versus uh, Bebop, and, Bebop and Rocksteady. And um, at the beginning of this comic book... They start off with the Battle of the Bands, and you think, oh, it's going to be rocking through the whole comic book, and you're like, oh, no, it's just a couple of pages. <laughs> I was like, huh, okay, way to cut it sweet. Um, uh, in the end, though, um, something happens. Uh, well, not in the end. Uh, I would say that that battle or that arc of the story is now over, and it's continuing on. Um Remember, there is more than just Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael, and uh, Donatello. Um, there's a couple other turtles that are out there now. Uh, Jenica is the female nin um, female mutant ninja turtle that wasn't a turtle in this storyline. Um, she was a human taking on um, Leonardo's blood. Uh, Donatello helped with it. Um, then somewhere in there uh there's because there's a bunch of mutants now you know everywhere um there's a, a a little ninja turtle in there her name's lita um and supposedly spoiler alert Raphael's her dad but she's also from the future and she doesn't want to release all this information what's weird in this storyline is that everything looks hunky dory in this like in her future right what I mean by that is the last Ronin, there's only one Ninja Turtle. Well, you also got to remember the last Ronin, that was written by um, Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman. So is this. Well, it's Eastman. Not, well, Eastman's the artist. Yeah. So the Peter, this was when um, Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman were still, still tight with yeah. each other. But, um, you know, that story that they did was, like, back in the 80s um, that they did that was never released uh, for that. So, um, the last Ronin, I don't think, is in canon with the ongoing... Ongoing um, IWD right. or IDW. Right. It's pretty yeah. much like when um, The Dark Knight Returns came out yeah. with the future don't, um, stuff like that. Don't, don't get it wrong, though. Like, IDW does last Ronin, too, but um, it's still... It, they still uh, advertise it in, inside this comic book, but, you know, try to separate it. But at the same time, I was like, wait a second. Why is this different? Why is the continuity different? So maybe the last Ronin might change and it might not be just the last Ronin. Who knows? No, it's going to be knows? separate. You got, you got, when you read this, you got to look at it like watching DC comic movies where they think they try to put it together. But I don't, don't. want to. <laughs> nothing ha nothing nothing ever has to be guys. in canon <laughs> right like what just happened with Kanan uh Kanan in uh Star Wars right right the, the, the comic book came out and freaking uh that ain't what is canon anymore it's what is canon inside the bad batch mm -hmm. right what else we got 
Um, my next pick is Justice League Last Ride number two. Um, so I talked about it in uh, other episodes too as well. This is like the Justice League uh, forming for like the last time because um, something bad happened in the mission. And um, with this um, issue, we find out um, little bits of pieces on what happened to them disbanding uh, for that. Um, there is a little spoiler here that I'll share because um, I talked about it in issue number one. But if you haven't read issue number one, that's your fault. And <laughs> now I'm going to talk about issue number two now because you didn't listen or watch or liked and subscribed like we told you to. Yeah. So, um, the mission that they're doing right now is that they, um, have to protect, um, this main character that did some bad things to the fact that, the um, Green Lantern Corps asked the Justice League to reform to help them out and try to protect, um, this person from being killed. And here's a spoiler, the person that the Green Lantern Corps and the Justice League are trying to protect is Lobo. Yep, Lobo did some bad things. But he's a bad man. Yeah. So, <laughs> he did some pretty bad things. We haven't found out what it is yet. So, in the um, last issue, when Superman was trying to talk to Batman, of like, hey, we gotta get the band back together. And Batman's like, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm in Gotham City. But then, you know, Superman did one of his speeches, and Batman was like, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> He's the, like, fu the funny thing I is, with, you, Clark. The, funny, <laughs> the funny thing with my voice when I just said that, that's why John John's laughing because he heard Batman yeah. say it when I went, God damn it. If, if you close your eyes sometimes, Chris sounds like Batman. The Dark Knight. Right. Seriously. Anyways. So, um, <laughs> Batman, Batman's um, idea, which you'll see, and that's where they're heading to. But Batman's idea of the only way to protect Lobo from getting killed, taking him to Apocalypse. Now I want to read it. Mm -hmm. Now I want to read it. It's a good read um, for that. So um, definitely check it out. It's a mini series, so it's not like a crazy ongoing series. But definitely go to your um, comic book stores and um, check it out. Right on. Um, this is my last pick. This is uh, Children of the Atom, number four. Um, man, it, it, reboot or not, I don't know how to explain it. Um, the characters, it's X Men. It's always it, a reboot or, or something, right? So, so we have uh, the character Cherub that is basically Archangel. We have Marvel Guy, who's basically like Beast, but can throw out like gas and stuff. And then we got Psychop Blast, which I thought was a guy at first, but no, it's really a girl who's Psychops. Um, and then I we can't got keep up. I know. <laughs> then we got Gimmick, who's basically Gambit, and then we got Daycrawler, who's basically Nightcrawler, right? Uh, -uh. <laughs> uh So, anyways, like I got interested in this comic book because I was like, oh. These are like their kids or something. Nah, not at all. These, 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 what's weird is that you think they're still leading on to like if they're really mutants or not. Like there's no specific. They say, oh, it's a specific type of human, right? That they're, they're, they're calling themselves or they're not. And the crazy thing is they're still not allowed to go on to the X-Men's island where all the mutants are able to go to. So are they basically being treated like in the Harry Potter universe that they're muggles? It's weird because like, I you don't know because they they got powers. Right, they're doing things. Well, Harry Potter had powers, but he wasn't the full. But he was able to go right. Right, You're right, right. He could go through the the alleyway, freaking go through, through the, the, the subway. Yeah, he could go through the wall. So these guys can't go through the portal mm. for some reason. So. And they, in this one too, in number four, they say specific type of human. So, what type of human are they? Because if they're not mutants, then they're a specific type of human. Could they be inhumans? Hmm? I don't know. I don't know. You got to read it. Um, if you do know, let us know. Comment. Let us know because I'm, 
I'm being a dumb butt and probably just not really realizing that they're straight up human with with uh, some sort of enhancement given to them like somehow so I already told you how I feel about the X-Men comic books so I can't keep <laughs> up anymore there's so many of them uh, there's, uh, there's more comic books out there to uh, talk about but man we don't have that much time anymore <laughs> um shoot that's it on my end man what about you got anything else to talk about no, I mean, um, obvi- uh, we recently did a, um, a reaction to Loki. Yep. So definitely check out that video out. Um, it's our full reaction to the entire episode. Yep. Um, he has his um, opinion about it, and I have my opinion about it. Yep. Always agree to disagree to agree. To not agree. Whatever. To not agree. To not agree. But I agree with that. Yep. It's good entertainment. Yep. <laughs> Just watching us watch a show. Always fun. Um, anyways, that's it on my end, bro. Mm-hmm. I am John John the Phenomenon. Why to Chris? Like, subscribe, comment. I'm pointing the right way now. For what? Toward, I say that. Like, this, is where, this is where I'll like the other videos are yeah anyways <laughs> but yeah thanks for watching go freak media tv thanks for watching go freak media